Hey guys, welcome back to Primetime Studios. Like always, I'm your host, Primetime Phil, and today we're going to discuss Jake Ferguson, the fourth round draft pick out of Wisconsin. Stands about 6'5", 245 pounds, a big tight end. And to me, my favorite draft pick out of this whole draft. I love Sam Smith, Williams. I love Tyler Smith. I love the whole fact that you can get a good wide receiver in the third round and Jalen Tolbert. And I even love Ridgeway and all this stuff. But the guy that I like and really honestly fits what this offense is trying to look in, in that position that they got drafted in is this guy, Jake Ferguson, man. When you look at his background and what he's gone through in his life, his granddad was a head coach for Wisconsin, a very famous head coach for Wisconsin. His dad was a linebacker for Nebraska. His brother was a safety for Wisconsin, and he was born in Wisconsin, just went to the same school. So the fact that you get to play for your school that you probably grew up loving, that's that's a big honor. And not only that, to kind of be that feature tight end. So when you look at the feature tight end, what do you think about, man? I think about a tight end that can block, pretend to block, roll out, and, and just catch. Be able to catch the ball. Be the security blanket for your quarterback. And I think when you look in this offense, who's the first person you think of? You think of the tight end because that should be the first person that anybody goes to, whether it's your slot receiver that's closer or your tight end. I mean, you're running back sometimes, but that's really kind of like if you're really, really in trouble. So when you look at the ideal tight end, man, this guy is it. Because when you look at Wisconsin, what's Wisconsin known for? It's known for running the ball. So what did he have to do? He had to be able to block. That is just known. So what else did he have to do as a tight end? He has to be able to catch. And when you saw his ability to catch, he was able to bring it in very soft hands. And there was occasional times where you saw him bring it into the body. So that was the negative. You know, he, you know, he tries to catch with his body, but he still catches it with ease. So his ability to catch is definitely there. So you love that in tight end. So when you look at the numbers, you go, well, what happened? I mean, he's like three, 500 yard seasons because at Wisconsin, you run the ball. So you need to be able to block, which is something this team needs to be able to do is get back to running the ball. Whether you're on the fence of Pollard, whether you're on the fence of Zeke, you know you need to run the ball and you need to get these guys featured more. So you need a tight end that can block. And it can't just be a guy like Sprinkles. You need to be able to rely that you're going to be, you know, a guy that you can throw to on the, you know, spare moment that the play breaks up or or something doesn't happen or you design the play to be able to blocking play and then go out for a pass. You know how it is, man. This offense needs to be more than just one dimensional and you need a tight end that can bring a bunch of different elements and that's what this guy can do. So when you look like a guy like, you know, Schultz that's, that's right there and it, it's his job to lose, no, I think it's Jake Ferguson's job to win because when you look at Schultz, his weakness is that he's not great at blocking. Now, is it because he's such a great actor and, and he pretends to not block so he can get open? No, I see it in the running game too, man. One thing that Jake Ferguson that does within this, you know, within the running game is he gets his body between the defender and the ball carrier, the ball holder, whoever's holding the ball. He definitely is great at putting his body between them. Now, did he have great strength and, and, and anchoring himself? Not all the time, but he definitely got his feet underneath him, so he was able to hold those blocks. So even when he was getting slung around side to side, he was still holding the block immediately as soon as he hit back down on the ground. So you love a tight end that can still hold his block, but he was also able to kind of pretend and act and get open and, and, and roll out and get those wide open and touchdowns. So he definitely had all the elements when it comes to what you want your tight end to do. And you don't have to just believe me. Let me list, let you listen in on some other YouTubers and something that I've definitely been bringing to this you know channel is trying to listen to what other guys are saying as well too. But you know the guy that I got today is, is definitely a big honor. Guy that's been giving me a voice every Sunday at four at four to five p.m. Uh, it depends on where you're at, but five p.m. Eastern Standard Time, four p.m. Mountain, United Central, all that kind of stuff. You know how that works. Uh, but but a guy that's been giving me the opportunity, Brian Green, the opportunity. A guy that's gonna I'm gonna be partnered as well with. But uh, and, and if you ever watch any of his channels, you love to see what he does within the cowboy community. A guy like Stewart that passed away from cancer, uh, and, and other things that he had. Um, you know, he made a promise to him that he would go down there and actually uh, help him with his house and the mother and everything. And once Stewart passed, and you know, right before they could even meet, I mean, he still went there and he fulfilled his promise, helped the mother out with all these fixes and stuff. So he's always there for the community. And so. Without further ado, I, I don't really need to introduce him, but here he is, Mark Holmes from Cowboys Joe Boo Sports Report. So, you know, take it away, Mark. Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I appreciate each of you, every one of you guys watching what we're doing here. My buddy, Primetime Phil, asked me for my thoughts about Jake Ferguson. Great blocking tight end, as well as actually having good hands. Now, as far as how does he fit for the Dallas Cowboys, I'm gonna play, actually, 
um, some highlights from him from college uh, catching the football. To understand what we need from him, we have to understand what the problems were for the Cowboys. When we look at what happened to the Dallas Cowboys, and people will talk about Zeke Elliott and how Zeke Elliott uh, fell off the face of the earth. You can see he's got great hands. He actually moves well with the football, and he's hard to go down. We can look at the offensive line and Tyron Smith getting hurt. In fact, we can look at the turning point for the Dallas Cowboys season. Something that hadn't really been talked about much is losing Dalton Schultz. See, Dalton Schultz was a great blocking tight end, and we found out in 2020 he could actually catch the football when Dalton Schultz was actually hurt. He went out after the Minnesota game and didn't play again until the Eagles um, game to end the season. And that right there really actually hurt the offensive line and actually hurt Zeke Elliott's carries. So what the Cowboys need from Jake Ferguson is actually to be able to block as well as to catch. He can catch, he can move, he works well in traffic, and if he can do that, he can become a security blanket. In fact, I believe there's already an effect for the Cowboys because Dalton Schultz being used on the franchise tag is partially, I believe, because they're trying to see what they really have from Jake Ferguson. Now, a lot of you will say, well, he's a fourth-round drafted guy. Well, most tight ends are not first-round uh, drafted players. Most of your great tight ends come actually later in the draft. Jason Witten was drafted in the third round for our Cowboys. Now, as he gets his man body, you know, where, you know, you still got that baby fat and things, and you start working out in the weight room and the training staff, I see him eventually being around about 260, maybe 265, with a little bit more meat on there, where he'll really be able to do some great blocking. You can see him right there. Look at that. Look at that catch in traffic. If he is at least as good as Blake Jarwin, this will enable the Cowboys to really get back to using a lot more 12 personnel. Because ultimately, you need a guy who's a dual threat, a guy who can block and a guy who can catch the football. And I believe that that is going to be the guy. And if he can come out the box and be that guy so that we can keep Jeremy Sprinkles on the, uh, the, the bench, basically, the Cowboys offense will be in great shape. Most of the players that we've drafted you know, they're not the exciting players, you know, not the C.D. Lambs and the Micah Parsons. But I believe that this draft that we had is the substance and the building blocks for our future teams. And I look at this guy and I look at his leaping ability and there's no guarantee that any of these guys are going to work out. You know, this time last year, we were all pissed off that uh, we drafted Micah Parsons. But in the end, it ended up being a great move. And sometimes you see guys that draft great players or what they think are going to be great players, and they turn out to be nobody. And that's the thing that you don't know until they get onto the professional fields on how good they will be or won't be. And so, Phil, I appreciate you uh, having me on your show. And uh, if you're watching this, make sure you definitely subscribe to Primetime Phil. He's going to be one of the great ones. He's up and coming, and I love working with him. Definitely love seeing him every Sunday, uh, getting his insights. And I'll see you guys real soon. And right there, that was Mark. Oh, my bad. That was Mark, the great Mark Holmes from Joe Boo Sports Report, a guy that is giving us a lot of videos, a lot of content out there, always giving us updates about the Dallas Cowboys, has his ears to the ground when it comes to other news and transactions and what is and what is not happening and kind of giving us the opinions of what Cowboys Nation is really thinking about as well. So definitely follow him if you haven't. And if somehow you jump to this channel, I've never seen his channel, that is going to be so surprising. And if you have, definitely tell me in the comments because I would love to know that story. So uh, let me jump into the next segment. Another guy that I love to bring onto this channel and of course the Brian Green with a soup Nazi segment. And here we go with his comments comments about what Jake Ferguson can bring to our team. Go ahead, take it over, Soup Nazi. No soup for you! Prime Time Phil, my YouTube partner in crime. You're the Batman to my Robin. I was at the mall the other day, and I was doing a little shopping for my lady, and I could not. I was having like a, a mental block. I could not find the right gift to get her. And then I was thinking, what is the one thing that all women like? All women love diamonds, Phil. Every woman I've ever met, known, love diamonds. And any of you ladies you're watching this, put down in the comments section whether you like diamonds or not. Or if you don't like diamonds, I want to hear that too. But I don't think I'm going to hear a lot of those. Everybody loves diamonds. And that got me thinking about a diamond that I think the Cowboys got. The Cowboys got a diamond, and I think in early on in the season, he can be a weapon for us. 
and that diamond is tight end Jake Ferguson out of Wisconsin. This cat blew up, you know, the first uh, rookie minicamp. He was a star. He all he does is get open. Yes, there are things he needs to work on. I'm not telling you that he's a polished a tight end, which is what we have to do. This training camp, we need to mold and polish this kid so he could be a star. I'm telling you, he's going to be a star. He's going to be a star. I was calling in the fourth round when Dallas was on the clock. I was calling for this kid. And you know it, Phil. You know it. But anyway, Cowboy fans, get ready for this kid. You heard it here. Jake Ferguson is going to blow up. We're one week away, Cowboys fans. We're one week away from Pats. I think next Wednesday. Less than a week away. I want to get everybody excited for this season. I'm excited. Let's go. Phil, let's go. No soup for you. So that was a quick word with Soup Nazi, a.k.a. Brian Green, another fellow Cowboy from Cowboy Nation, just giving you his views on what Dallas is and is doing. I think there's a lot of isn't in this off season but we all agree that we're excited about the season coming up i really want to see what these young guys are able to do especially jake ferguson let me know in your comments what do you think jake ferguson is going to do how many yards do you think he's going to have or you think he's going to be more of a, a touchdown uh red zone threat do you think he's going to be a guy that Dak can go on to on first downs do you think he's going to be a guy that kind of just blends into the background like mckinnon and and just lucky to make the squad i mean what do you think the future for jake ferguson holds and what do you think is going to happen with that ridiculous number of his so Thank you for tuning in. Like always, I'm Primetime Phil. I appreciate you guys hitting that like button on the way out. But don't forget to always ring that bell.